Although PM Magazine was a nationally syndicated show, its bread and butter was the local content from stations across the country, including right here at WCIA. We're excited to welcome a familiar face to many, former PM Magazine host Suzanne Kay joining us. Suzanne, great to have Hello. you with us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Let's just start with a little bit of an overview of PM Magazine. Well, the show is um, unfortunately no longer on the air, but it uh, launched in the late 70s and WCIA decided to um, have us on the air sometime in early 1980. So I was hired in at the end of 1979. We went live with the show um, in January of 1980. Um, there had been a national search for a host in um, Champagne, and I was very fortunate to get the job and loved living in the Midwest. It was great. Um, and I love the concept of the show because prior to joining PM Magazine, I was a reporter and a host on several other shows, uh, uh, talk shows. And I love the idea of PM Magazine because it was um, features. It was stories about people. It was doing stories that really were community-based and that's what really intrigued me and made me want to um, to audition for the show in Champaign and fortunately I was able to live out that dream for four years. And what was that transition like going from a reporter to being a host for a nationally syndicated show producing that local content? What was that like for you? It really wasn't that difficult of a transition because that's what I was doing as a reporter, always looking for the, the piece of a story that would make people understand this was not just about um, some big news story, but there were people involved and there were hearts involved and there were families involved. So because of that, and again, going back to why I wanted to do PM Magazine, it was because I wanted to tell the stories. And as a reporter, that's what I did and working with PM Magazine and the crew, that's what we did. We told the stories about people, places, and things. And um, it really was, as I said, an easy transition. And what was your experience like going out and finding the stories that made up Central Illinois that would have a spot on PM Magazine's nationally syndicated show? What was that like going out and being able to find and tell those stories? Well, fortunately, we had a very eager audience who shared ideas with us. But when we first started, um, before we ever went on the air, we were actively looking for stories. We would speak to people we knew or had met um, after we first moved, especially me, after first moving to central Illinois. And a lot of the staff at the station also had ideas. So we had to bank a lot of stories so that we, um, we were able to hit the road with um, plenty of, of material ready to go. And it was just a lot of fun. And then once we started doing stories and once we started uh, on the air, once the show started airing, people were sending in ideas. And it, it, it also, one of the other things we did is we called through a lot of the local newspapers because there were so many, and there still are, I assume, uh, small cities, small towns in the area. And they always had stories about um, someone who was, seemed to be very interesting. And so it wasn't that difficult. But when we first um, got together as a team, we were shooting stories, editing stories. There were a lot of um, 15, 16, 17 hour days getting everything ready to go for the rollout. Wow, that's amazing. And it is so cool, the privilege that so many journalists have of getting to know someone enough to be able to tell their story well. And it is a very privileged role. It's very fun to do. Um, do you have any stories that come to mind as ones that were highlights of your career or ones that you still remember to this day that you just valued getting to do that story? Well, of course, the local stories of uh, going to schools, um, go, working with kids. I love doing that. Um, one of my long lasting memories is I was able to do a story with the band called Champagne. Uh, some folks may remember that and got to be very good friends with uh, Rena Jones, who was the lead singer. And we became friends after that and, and had some great experiences together. Also, I remember a very fun story that I did and it was a professor 
I can't remember which university it was. Um, and he was known for being able to write backwards where he would write with his primary dominant hand, but then his um, other hand, uh, less dominant, and you were, he was able to write backwards and forwards. Wow. And, and to this day, I still try doing that. <laughs> so, um, and it works. And uh, that was a really, really fun story. How does that go for you when you try to do that, writing backwards? I can't try imagine it. trying to do that. No, it's not that difficult because your brain, your fingers follow one another. And so... It was very, it was very fun. And sometimes it's, it's one of those party tricks that you do. Um, <laughs> hey, watch what I can do. And um, it was a lot of fun. And again, I still try it every once in a while. Yeah, that's definitely one to keep in the back pocket. I'm sure very yeah. entertaining for many. And actually, we can get an inside look at this story that you're talking about and see this professor writing backwards because we have a preview for it. And of course, Suzanne, it's so interesting getting to hear your story and your involvement with PM Magazine right here at WCIA here in Champaign. Let's take a look at this package and we'll be back with you in just a bit. Thanks, Suzanne. Great. I can't wait to see it. Yes. Number one, the king of all garden material here in our particular county would be the tomato. Gene Elliott is your regular, mild-mannered Farmer City High School teacher. He teaches vocational agriculture and horticulture and has been doing so for 34 years. But when he puts his mind to it, he can communicate in a most unusual way. Gene Elliott is capable of writing whatever he wants with both hands at the same time. <laughs> I guess like that. Or upside down. Or backwards. How do you write all these different ways? Uh, basically, it started as a student in high school when an English teacher simply said, you don't have good handwriting. We had a little contest and uh, she wouldn't send mine in, so I felt a little bad about it. And I went home and decided I was going to learn how to write. and. I wanted to write any way I wanted to. Well, how do you do it? Practice. Without practice, it really doesn't work, and that's what's wrong with our students today. We need a little more practice. Does everyone have this ability? Is it difficult? I think natural ability is like in athletics. Some people have a little more natural talent, but most people that are successful and have any kind of triumphs, there's an old saying, is simply try with a little oomph. And so I think it's just basically trying it. She's doing it. This isn't fair. How about that? That is. She's excellent. You have practiced. Look at that. That's great. Okay. What we're going to have you try here is the easiest. What one hand does, the other hand will simply follow along. So if you try it with both hands, I think you'll find that it will work. He's right. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> that okay. is. It's easy. It's good. Uh, it's very easy. 